Hello, dear students. I am Dr. Mazhar Ali, and I welcome you to an introduction to artificial intelligence course. In this class, we will explore some of the ideas and techniques, as well as algorithms that are in the foundation of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence covers a wide variety of types of techniques. So anytime you see a computer do something that appears to be intelligent or rational in some way, like recognizing someone's face in a photo or being able to play a game better than people can or being able to understand the human language when we talk to our phones and they uh, understand what we mean and uh, are able to respond back to us. So these are our uh, examples of artificial intelligence or AI. Uh, today we are going to discuss the uh, searching techniques. So search is a very uh, important way to find the hidden truth or to reach the uh, target. All the problems can be converted to a form uh, where we have to start from a start state and search for a goal state by traveling through a solution space. So searching is a format mechanism uh, or the searching is a formal mechanism to explore alternatives. Therefore, the search strategies are important methods for many approaches to problem solving. The use of search requires an abstract formulation of the problem and the available steps to construct solutions. So search algorithms are the basis for many optimization and planning methods. So, for example, uh, I mentioned here three uh, ways or three types of search, like the classical approach, generate and taste, and problem representation. So, classical and classical uh, approach. Classical approach means uh, uh, to solve a problem uh, is a really uh, pretty simple. Uh, given a problem at hand, use hit and uh, trial method to check for various. Uh, solutions to the problem. So uh, in this approach, so uh, what we ha what happened? This hit and trial approach. This is a basically a hit and a trial approach. It usually works well for uh, the trivial problems, and um, is referred to as uh, uh, the classical approach to problem solving. Means you hit and try uh, uh, try some solution. You don't know how the problem will solve, but you uh, you try to hit, and then uh, try some uh, solution or get some uh, solution. So consider the maze. If I look here, uh, consider the uh, maze searching problem. For example, there is a problem. Uh, what is problem here? If you look here, uh, the mouse want to reach uh, uh, this place. Means there, for example, there is a switch. So mouse want to reach here. So a mouse will uh, find the path to reach here. So it is called the uh, maze problem. So mouse basically uh, travels through one path and finds that the path leads to a dead end. Dead end means what is the target. So it then uh, backtracks uh, somewhat and goes along some uh, uh, other path and again finds that uh, uh, there is no way to uh, proceed. So it goes on uh, performing such search, trying different uh, uh, solutions to solve the problem until a sequence of uh, turns in the maze takes it to the cheese. So it uh, hit and uh, try the solution. For example, he try, uh, mouth, uh, um, mouse tries different ways to reach the uh, target. And there is a cheese basically which mouse want to take. So hence of all the solutions, the mouse tries uh, the one that reached the cheese was the one that uh, solved the problem. So for example, this is the way, one way, this is the way, again it come here, here. And then here, 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 and it reaches. This is the one way. Another way, is it starts from here and goes here, 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 here. So now you have to find the shortest path, which is a more better, which is a better for the uh, mouse. 
this is the longest path path and this is the shortest path but mouse try to reach the target another uh, problem solution technique is a generate and test this is also searching technique so this is a, a technical uh, this is a technical name given to the uh, classical way of solving problem where we generate uh, different combinations to solve our problem and the one which solves the problem is taken as a uh, correct solution so the rest of the combinations that we try are uh, considered as an incorrect solution and hence are uh, destroyed so here uh, what happens for the look here uh, these are the solution generator so these are the possible solutions but it is a uh, it, it's not correct that all are the possible uh, they, they may be possible solution but it is not necessary that all should be the solution so you try some solutions and then uh, test those solutions if you find the correct solution then send here if you find uh, the incorrect solution then uh, send to the uh, incorrect solution box so definitely if you do have the uh, six uh, uh, possible solutions there may be the from six only two may be the true cor uh, correct solution but majority of your tries uh, are are the uh, incorrect solutions so this is also a way to reach the target or to solve the problem so in problem representations what happens all the problems that we have seen until uh, now were trivial in nature when the magnitude of the uh, problem uh, increase and more uh, parameters are added for example the problem of developing a timetable then we have to come up with a, a procedure better than the simple generator uh, simple generator and uh, test to know one more thing that is the true about problem solving and namely the uh, problem representation so the uh, key to problem solving is an actually uh, good representation of a problem the natural uh, representation of problem is usually done using uh, graphics and uh, diagrams to develop a clear picture of the uh, problem in your mind so if you look here for example uh, the, if you look here at uh, this chart this chart shows uh, the problem of switching uh, the, this one it shows the problem of switching on the uh, light uh, by a toddler in a graphical form so each rectangle represents the state of the switchboard that is the off 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 means that all the you know, three uh, switches are off similarly off uh, on off off or uh, off or if you look here off on off means uh, that the first and the last switch are off and the middle one is uh, on if you look here so starting from the state when all the uh, switches are off the child can proceed in uh, uh, any of the three ways by switching uh, either one of the switch on so this brings the toddler to the uh, next level in the tree now from here he can explore the other options till the uh, gates to a uh, state where the uh, switch corresponding to the light is on hence our problem was uh, reduced to finding a node in the tree which uh, is so on is the place corresponding to the light switch so observe how representing a problem indicate we clarify the approach uh, to be taken to solve it so these are the approaches or ways to solve the problems uh, let us now be a bit more formal in dealing with problem solving and take a look at the topic with reference to Uh, some components that continue problem solving so they are namely uh, problem statement goal state solution space and operators so uh, i will discuss each one of them uh, briefly with you in this class so problem statement is a basically uh, uh, this is a uh, 
very essential component whereby we get to know uh, what exactly the problem at hand is. So uh, the, uh, the ma two major things that we get to know about the problem is the information about what is to be done and con uh, constraint to whichever solution and solution should uh, employ. So the problem statement is a very much important when you are uh, going to solve the problem. First of all, you have to understand the problem. You have to state the, the problem, that what uh, kind of problem is there, or uh, what is the nature of the problem. Then you should go to the uh, solution. So in order to reach the solution, we need to check various strategies. We might, uh, we might or might not follow a, a systematic strategy in all classes. Whenever we follow, uh, we have to go through a certain amount of states of nature to reach the solution. For example, when the mouse was uh, in the lower left uh, corner of the maze, represent a state that, uh, represent, uh, that represents another state. If uh, you remember, look here, this is the initial state of the mouse. So when it was traveling uh, on path, represent, uh, represent some uh, other state. And finally, when it uh, reaches the, uh, what is the target, or it reaches the cheese, here is the target is basically to get the cheese. So when it reaches the cheese, it represents a state called the goal state. So this is the initial state, and this is a goal state. <clears throat> so the set of the start state, I mean, there's this one, the goal state in this one uh, and all the intermediate uh, states all the, the these are the intermediate states uh, means from initial point to goal state which type of the states are coming are the uh, mid states so uh, means the, the in all the intermediate states means with all the intermediate states constitute something which is called a solution space. So this is the uh, solution space. What is here between, this is the initial point, this is the goal point. Now it starts uh, uh, searching from initial point to reach the goal point. What is between the initial and goal points are the uh, solution space. The solution space. So then traveling in the solution space, traveling in solution space means they start from initial state and reach at the goal state. So we have to travel inside this solution space to find a solution to our, to our uh, problem. The traveling inside the solution space requires something called the operators. So in the case of the mouse example, turn left, turn right, uh, go straight or the operators which help us uh, the travel inside the solution space. So, for example, I go back. If you see, this is the uh, turn left, turn right, turn. These are basically operators. So, in short, the action that uh, takes us from one state to the other is uh, referred to as an operator. So, while uh, solving a problem, we should we should know what are the operators that we can use to uh, reach the goal, goal state from the starting state. So the sequence of uh, these operators is the solution to uh, our problem. A state is a <clears throat> uh, just some configuration of the agent in its environment. So a state is just uh, some configuration of the tiles. Each of these states is a different and is a going to require a, a slightly different solution. A different uh, sequence of actions will be needed in each one of these in order to get from uh, this initial state to the uh, goal state, uh, which is where we are trying to get. So the initial state then, uh, what is that? The initial state is basically uh, the state where the agent or search begins. So it is a uh, uh, <clears throat> so so it is one such uh, state where we are going to start from, and this is a going to be the 
starting point for our uh, search algorithm. We are going to uh, begin with this initial state and then start to reason about it, to think about what actions might we apply so that initial state in order to figure out how to get from the beginning to the end, from the initial position to uh, whatever our goal happens to be, and how do we make our way from the uh, initial position to the goal. So ultimately, it's via uh, taking actions. So actions are just choices that we can make in a uh, given state. As you uh, saw in the uh, here in the maze, this maze, so this mouse starts is searching from this initial point to reach this uh, uh, goal point, but it performs actions to find the proper path to reach the target. So sometimes it goes to the left side, sometimes it goes to the right side. So these all are the actions uh, which are taken by this mouse to reach the uh, goal. So uh, in AI or artificial intelligence, we are always going to try to formalize these ideas a little bit more precisely such that we could program them a little bit more uh, mathematically. So this will be a, a recurring theme and uh, we can more precisely define actions as a function. So we are going to uh, effectively define a function called uh, actions that takes um, an input ACE. Uh, where ACE is uh, going to be uh, some state that exists uh, uh, inside of our environment and actions of ACE, um, action of ACE is uh, uh, going to take the state as an input and return as an output, uh, the set of all actions that can be executed in the state. As you saw in the uh, maze where mouse was performing actions uh, and it takes the inputs of the path that from where uh, mouse has to go, go to reach the target. And so it's a possible that some actions are only valid in certain states and not in other states because uh, there may be uh, some path may be blocked. And uh, we will see, uh, for example, uh, example even in the coming slides that how actions are performed. So we are uh, going to begin this initial state and then start to reason about it, to think about uh, what actions might we apply to that initial state in order to figure out how to get from the uh, beginning to the end. So from the initial position to whatever our goal happens to be and uh, how do we make our way from uh, that initial position to the goal. So we ultimately, uh, uh, it's uh, by taking actions. So actions are just choices that we can make in uh, any given state. So if you look here, this is the path. For example, this is the, the initial point. This is the initial point and we have to traverse from this point to this point. The, we are performing actions. Now there are different points uh, here which may be barrier but we go uh, through these all points, uh, we turning uh, right, left, and so on to reach the uh, target. So uh, search strategies basically, search strategies and algorithms that we will, uh, we, uh, will study are blind or uh, uninformed or informed heuristic. Uh, so any path, non-optimal and optimal path search uh, uh, algorithms so we will uh, discuss each of these using the same mouse example as we saw there. So suppose the mouse does not uh, know where and how far is the cheese and, and uh, for example here, there, here. So uh, without any hint that will help it uh, turning because um, the mouse does not uh, know where and how far is the cheese and is uh, blind to the configuration of the maze because mouse does not know what the path will. Mouse just try and hit. So the mouse would blindly search the maze without any hint that will help uh, it in a turning left or right. Uh, left or right means these are the actions at uh, different uh, junctions as well. Therefore, the mouse will purely use a hit and uh, 
uh, trial approach and will seek all combinations until one check it to the uh, cheese. So uh, such searching is uh, called blind or uh, uninformed search, if you look at uninformed search, searching. To consider now that the cheese is a fresh, this is a cheese, cheese is a fresh, and the smell of cheese is spread through the maze. The mouse will now use this smell as a guide or a heuristic to guess the uh, position of the cheese and choose the <coughs> based from the uh, alternative choices. So, as the smell gets stronger, the mouse knows. <coughs> that the cheese is a uh, closer. Hence, the mouse is informed, uh, uh, informed about the cheese um, through the simile and thus performs an informed search in the maze. So, for now, uh, you might think that the informed search will always give us a better solution and will always solve the problem. When we solving the maze search problem, uh, we saw uh, that the mouse can reach the cheese from different paths. And in the diagram, two possible paths are shown. Uh, this one, this is a one path is a this one, and second path path is a this one. So, <clears throat> in any path, uh, non or uh, non optimal uh, searches. Uh, we are con uh, concerned with uh, finding any one solution to a problem. As soon as we find a solution, we stop without thinking that, that there might uh, as well uh, be a better way to solve the problem, uh, which might take a lesser time or uh, fewer operators. So contrary to this, in optimal path searches, uh, we try to find the best solution. For example, in the, the this, if you look here, the optimal path is the uh, blue one, uh, where the cost of the solution uh, may be different for each algorithm. So, informed search means we know the target. You know? So, there are different techniques like the heuristic, the based for search, greedy search, asterisk search. And in the un uninformed search, we don't know the path, we try and hit to reach the target. So in this uh, one way is uh, the depth for search and breadth for search and the bidirectional searches. <laughs> depth for search is a recursive uh, algorithm for traversing a tree or a, a graph data structure. So it is called the depth for search because it starts from the root node and follows each path to its uh, greatest depth uh, node before moving to the uh, next path. <coughs> so DFA is our depth, uh, uh, depth for search uses a stake uh, data structure for its uh, implementation. So the depth for search is the search algorithm uh, where we always explore the uh, deepest node in the frontier. So we keep uh, going deeper and deeper through our search tree and then if we uh, hit a date end, we back up and we try something else instead. But the depth for search is just one of the possible search options that we could use. It turns out that there is another algorithm called a breadth for search, which behaves very similarly to a depth for search uh, with one difference. So instead of all these, um, we will discuss the breadth first search after the depth first search in detail. So instead of all these uh, exploring the deepest node in the search tree, the way uh, the depth first search does, the breadth, uh, breadth first search is always going to explore the sh shallowest uh, node in the frontier. So if we look at the advantages of depth first search, the DFS or depth first search requires very little memory as it only needs to store the stake of the nodes on the path from the root node to the uh, current node. And uh, another advantage of this search strategy is uh, it takes uh, less time to reach the goal node than the uh, breadth first search algorithm. Uh, if it travels in the uh, right path, 
but there are some disadvantages of this search strategy as well so there is the possibility that many uh, states keep reoccurring and there is a no guarantee of finding the solution sometimes it happens and um, uh, the dfas algorithm uh, goes for deep down searching and sometimes it may go to the uh, infinite loop as well therefore it cannot reach the target <coughs> so in this tree <coughs> uh, uh, the flow of depth for search uh, uh, show uh, the deepest uh, uh, way of searching so if you look here this is the tree and uh, the target uh, the star <coughs> from initial state the target is to reach the g so uh, the searching starts at zero level that the s in, in this tree the flow of depth for search is shown if you look here so it follows the order that is a root node is this is a root node then uh, it goes to the left side and then uh, it find that either there is a target no it does not find the target then go to the next level the b it does not uh, find the target and then the third it go to the d and does not find the target and then e it does not find the target even it comes from this b so it uh, does not find the target and then to the c and then to the g and g is the target so it, it starts searching from uh, root node a if you look here and it travels a and then b and then d and then e after traversing e it will backtrack again it will backtrack uh the tree as a e has no other successor because this is the uh, dead end there is no other successor and is still goal node um, uh, is not found so after backtracking it will traverse node c again this one when from c it go to the c and then g and here it terminates as it found the goal node so this is the way uh, of searching in the depth for search if you look here is it go deep to find the target so <clears throat> dfa search algorithm is a complete with infinite state space as it uh, expands every node uh, within a limited search tree the time complexity of uh, deepest uh, depth for search uh, will be equivalent uh, to the node traversed by the uh, algorithm so it is a given uh, for example the time of the node uh, what is the time of node and then <coughs> find each node so it will show the time time complexity so <coughs> dfas algorithm uh, needs to store only a single path from the uh, root node hence uh, hence the uh, space complexity of dfas is equivalent to the size of the Uh, fringe set uh, which is a uh, definitely o of bm so the dfs search algorithm is a non optimal is it may generate a large number of states or high cost to reach to the uh, goal node <coughs> so there is another example of finding a path from a to e <coughs> so we start with the a then we will go ahead and um, have explored a and say where can we get to from a so uh, well uh, from a we can get to uh, b means we, we we can get to b and from b same as above uh, we can get to uh, c and d so c and d get added to the frontier so we added c to the frontier before d so uh, we will explore c first so c gets explored and from c where can we get to so we can get to uh, e if you look here we can get to e so e gets uh, <coughs> uh, e 
uh, gets added to the frontier. But because D was explored before E, we will look at uh, D next. So uh, we will explore D and say, where can uh, we get to, uh, from D? So we can get to F and only then we will be, uh, we, we then will be uh, say, all right. So now we can get to uh, E here, if you look here. So this is another way uh, in the maze farm. The, this farm, uh, the depth uh, for search strategy, uh, this is through a tree and how we can perform depth for search through the maze. So this is the initial point and this is the goal point. And the depth for search go in a deep to find the target. So if you look here, it go, <coughs> it starts <coughs> and performs actions. So it go deep because it does not know where is a target <clears throat> because this is an uninformed search so it does not know uh, the proper path uh, to reach the target so it it go in a deep to find the target here this is the dead end it uh, does not find the target so <clears throat> it will start another way it is also a dead end and it could not find the path now it starts from here to find the target <clears throat> Again, it uh, reached the, the uh, dead end <coughs> and could not find the target. So again, it uh, starts from here to reach the target because it will go to every path to reach the target. If you look here, so again, it's at uh, dead end and it does not find the target. So now it's uh, on the right path to reach the target and you see it reached the target. So in a maze, it performs like this. <coughs> the rate for search is the most common search strategies for traversing a tree or a graph. So this algorithm searches a uh, breadth uh, wise in a tree or a graph. So it is called the breadth for search. Breadth for search also pronounced as a BFS. So BFS algorithm starts searching from the root node of the tree and expands all successor nodes at the current level before moving to the nodes of the next level. The breadth for search algorithm is an example of a general graph search algorithm. So breadth for search uh, implemented using the FIFO and uh, the depth was the VIFO. <coughs> the FIFO means the Q data structure. It is a Q data structure. <coughs> so if we look uh, at the advantages of breadth for search, we find that BFS uh, will provide a solution if any solution exists. If there are <coughs> more than one solution for a given problem, then BFS uh, will provide the minimal solution which uh, requires the least number of steps. However, there are some uh, disadvantages of uh, this search strategy as well because it requires lots of memory. Uh, since each level of the tree must be saved into memory to expand uh, the next level. So BFS uh, needs lots of time if the solution is a far away from the root node. Look at this tree. In this tree structure, uh, the traversing of the tree using the BFS algorithm from the root node is to goal uh, node K is shown. So BFS search algorithm traverse in the layers so it follows the path which is shown by the uh, dotted arrows and the uh, uh, traversed path. So the traversed path, is the, it starts from A in the starting point and goes to the A. And because breadth for search is working on both sides, on the right side as well as on the left side at a time. So it goes to the A as well as to the B. <coughs> and uh, then from A, C, and uh, then D, and then G from B, from G to H, and from C, it goes to the E, and uh, it goes to the uh, F. There's a no successor of D, so there's a successor of G, so <coughs> it will go to I because it, it uh, works in the breadth. And again, there's a no successor of I, 
as well as the no successor of H, so it go back to the E and go to the K. That is the target of the uh, <coughs> this search strategy. So it works in the bullets on the both sides. That's why it's the fast uh, searching strategy. <coughs> So the time complexity of the uh, BFS algorithm can be obtained by the number of nodes traversed in the BFS until, uh, until the uh, shallowest uh, node. The space complexity of the BFS algorithm uh, is given by the memory size of the frontier, uh, which is uh, obviously O of B square. So um, since the BFS is a complete, uh, which means if the shallowest uh, goal node is at some finite depth, then BFS will find a solution. So the BFS is optimal if path cost is a non-decreasing uh, function of the depth of the uh, node. So if you look here in the maze, this is the initial point and this is the uh, target point. So it, it starts to search from the both sides, from the right side and the left side. So if you look here, the left side and the right side, it it searches on both sides. That's why it's a fast. So the target is a reached. Therefore, in the maze, it was like this. <coughs> Another uh, searching strategy of the uninformed search is the bidirectional search. So the bidirectional search algorithm runs two uh, simultaneous searches. One from the initial state called the forward search and the other from the goal node called the backward search <coughs> to find the goal node. Means from bottom, from initial point and from the uh, uh, goal point. That's why one is a forward search, second is a backward search. So the bi bi bidirectional search uh, replaces uh, one single search graph with the two uh, sub, sub uh, small subgraphs in which one starts the search from an initial vertex and the other starts from the goal vertex. The search starts then these two graphs uh, intersect each other. So bidirectional search can uh, use search techniques such as the BFS, DFS, DLS, and etc. <coughs> so the advantages of bidirectional search, uh, uh, bidirectional search is faster than the others because it uh, searches from uh, in the form of forward search and backward search, and bidirectional search requires less memory as well. But the disadvantage of the search is the implementation of the bidirectional search tree that is a really difficult not easy <coughs> so <coughs> in a bidirectional search one should know the goal state in advance look at the example of bidirectional search so this graph is a, uh, intersected into two things this is the root node and this is the goal node <coughs> so in this search tree a bidirectional search algorithm is applied. This algorithm divides one graph or tree into two subgraphs. It is starts traversing from node one in the forward uh, direction and it starts from goal node 16 in the <coughs> goal node 16 in the backward direction. The algorithm terminates at node nine where two searches meets, like if you look here. It come here and it come here. And when they meet here, the algorithm works ain't. So this is a very much fast. It starts from a root node and goal node and they reach the target. So this is the <coughs> goal node and this is the root node and intersection node is a nine. So it comes from here and, and it comes from here and both reach the uh, intersection node. And when they reach the intersection node, then the search is a ended because they uh, reach the target, they avail the uh, target. So thank you very much for watching this lecture. This is the first part of uh, this lecture. We discussed today uh, what is the uh, search strategy, how it works, and we discussed the uninformed search strategies. The depth first search, 
plates for search and bidirectional search. In the next lecture, we will uh, discuss the informed uh, search algorithm with its uh, searching te uh, techniques and strategies. <coughs> so, share this lecture with your friends, subscribe to this channel, and uh, mark the bell icon that you may get the notifications in future. Take care. We will meet uh, in the next session.